throw the 18 of Kimmy Johnston. Marty Arnett will roll off in car 25 at a Lifestyle Condoms machine in position 15 to his outside. That's the 23 from Alabaster, Alabama, the Guinness Chevrolet of Del Mears. Dan Zaneo, the godfather of DMP, will start inside of row number 9 in the 17th spot and outside of row number 9, the 99 machine of Greg Donovan. That is a lot of nines. That certainly is, Daryl, and if you want to really add some more to it, Jason Dorff rolls off in position 1-9. That's the 82 car. The Washington, Illinois entry from Buffalo Wild Wings. And to his outside, we're getting to the threes now, Daryl. The 33. That's Brian Blackford from Seminole, Florida. The Triad Long Care Chevrolet. Let's add another three to that one. Starting 21st on the field, the 43 of Tommy Ryan. And outside of him, the number four machine of Scott Patton. Steven Steffen will take that number five machine from position number 23 to his outside Georgia's own Darren Turner in the number 41 unsponsored Dodge Charger. Jody Green will have to come from towards the back. He'll start 25th in the number 13 and in the 14 machine. Consecutive numbers. Isn't that nice for row number 13? Jim Moore in the 14. Bill Dorsey took one very slow qualifying lap. Apparently transmission problems on that number 20 machine. They'll get all that fixed before race time here momentarily. He'll roll off in position 27, and shotgun on the field is going to be the 40 car. That is Rick Savage, the Ferndale, Washington driver, driving the Recover Company Chevrolet Impala for Savage Motorsports, Daryl. Yeah, and Rick Savage is going to be one of those guys to watch for working his way the to the front. But as live, NRT Redline servers and OLR TV. DMP drivers, please report to the starting grid. Gentlemen, start your engines. Now the motors are fired. Savage is going to be one of those guys to watch for, working his way towards the front as we get under green flag conditions here. Rick Savage is a guy that likes to start at the back and work his way to the front. A little bit like a Bob Bryant last season. And yeah, there's a lot of guys that like to do that, Daryl, because, well, it makes things fun. And for that matter, the way some of these races have gone with the first couple of laps being a little bit hairy, well, there's nobody behind you to push you into the wreck. You can get on the binders, you can back off, you can let things happen, and then slowly move your way up. About that point, okay, let's use some pit track, let's drive our way to the front, and before you know it, you're up in the top five or the top ten and have a real shot at a good finish come the end of the night. Cars rolling out onto the racing surface here. Ray Alfala will be behind the safety car here in DMP. Of course, in our group, we call it the safety car. So we try to do the same here on OLR TV. Ray Alfala will pull in behind that safety car for the first of two pace laps here to set the field and get these drivers ready. And that's one of the advantages they have here in ARCA Sim Racing 2008. They can set the amount of pace laps. They can cancel a caution. They, there's a whole bunch of things they can do. They can restack the field middle of the race should they choose to. Don't think we'll be seeing that here tonight, but one never knows when you go racing with DMP. And you get that second lap there, Tony, and oftentimes on a shorter track, it lets you get the entire field gathered up. I know sometimes in other pieces of software uh, you get out to a place like Bristol or Martinsville and you don't have time to get everybody caught up in the green flag fly. Uh, the other thing that does you, it, it gives you a little bit more time to think about what's about to happen. It gives these drivers perhaps an extra lap to either get themselves calmed down some or, more than likely, get themselves worked up. Yeah, Daryl, and sometimes that can lead to disaster in turn number one, particularly in a track flat like Milwaukee. The bottom groove is where you want to be, and you get a lot of guys, 30 different drivers, trying to get right down there in that yellow curb. And sometimes somebody's in their way, that leads to contact, which can lead to early cautions. The good news is, however, here with Arca Sim Racing, Daryl, unlike previous versions of the software, the high groove is a very viable option. You can, in fact, hold tough out there. Maybe on the opening lap you can't make up any positions unless the guys in the bottom really bog it down. But you can certainly hold your own, and it's not a death sentence by any means to be on the top line come the start. No, it certainly is a death, it's not a death sentence to be up on the high line. And... 
Obviously, the beginning of the race, they're going to want to work down to the inside, but towards the end of this deal, you'll see them going anywhere they can possibly go. Green flag flies, and we are underway. The Kicks for Kids 150 is officially underway here on OLR TV. And as expected, it's going to be Ray Alfala leading them down into turn number one. As they come out of turn number two, you can see the advantage of having the inside line early in the race. You can't, Daryl, back from about the eighth spot right behind him. It's already three wide. Keith Bishop, Ricky Harden, Harrison Wallace all going for A.J. Allmendinger is right there in that battle as well. Allmendinger works the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to try to make up a couple of spots very early in this one. They'll come across the line to complete lap number one. A.J. Allmendinger already up to the eighth spot. And now he'll rub doors with Keith Bishop as they work through turns one and two. A.J. Allmendinger definitely the driver on the move and perhaps... He's thinking back to previous weeks and his luck that's gone down here in DMP, and he's deciding, you know what, I'm going to get to the front, lead as much as I can, because more than likely I'm not going to be here at the end anyways. Yeah, Daryl, you think back to Pocono with about five laps to go. AJ lost internet or international. Internet connection, never a good thing, but three wide behind him as we almost lose contact with what's going on on the racetrack. Harden in the middle once again. He and Wireless just cannot seem to get away from each other. Wireless hits the wall of turn two, gets it to Tim Johnson. Johnson gets a piece of it and nearly loses control, Daryl. But everybody gathers it back in. We're still under green. Harrison Wireless and Ricky Harden, though, drifting backwards rather early here in the Kicks for Kids 150. Top three positions under contention as here comes Dylan Pettis. Pettis down to the inside, picks up the top spot. Alfala stuck to the outside. That'll bring Thomas Hazard up into the number two spot, but they're still side by side for that second spot, and that works just fine for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Thank you very much, as he gets a good shot at perhaps tracking these drivers down. As the top three, we're starting to check out a little bit from the winner of the previous two races here in DMP. But, Daryl, I don't think that's any sort of worry for Dale Jr. and T.J. Majors behind them, because if you remember... The way Junior won those races, well, he didn't get out to an early lead that was real big. He sat there by the side, conserved his tires, Daryl. And once everybody else had burned up those tires, particularly the right front, where was Junior? Eaten right around the white line, getting back in the gas before any of those guys could even dream of picking up the throttle and just pulled away during the later stages of a tire run. And I think it's exactly what he's going to be trying to do here later this evening. We'll have to see if that indeed is the case, but Dylan Pettis, Tom Hazard, and Ray Alfala as your top three are putting on one whale of a show here in the early laps, Daryl. Well, you know, you want to talk about uh, classy individuals. We've, we've got some classy people here uh, in the online racing world, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. certainly fits into that category. He went through two weeks ago, uh, and then to come out on a, two, on a Monday night, compete here as the yellow flag flies, here in this one, compete here in DMP, come out, win the race, stick around, do post-race interviews, and all the other things involved in that, when, let's face facts, you wanted to go and hang out and just relax some from, uh, from a very busy, very, very busy week uh, in his non-online world, and still showed the class uh, to hang out and do all the things that uh, perhaps your average sim racer would do, and, and a lot of people gained a lot of respect for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the last couple of weeks, especially from the way he carried himself in DMP after knowing that that was one tired, tired man after the weekend he had two weeks ago. Matt Thomas has the replay. He'll show us why we're under yellow. Yeah, I'm hoping Bill to see this. Looks like he just drifts up to the wall. And 7-2, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen to him here. I'm actually uh, seeing a little bit of warp from uh, our <laughs> our connection here. So I think he actually just blew, him, blew it up, and uh, that was the problem with the 72 machine. Well, some pit stops games, pit stop games taking place. One of the drivers making a pit stop is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Pettis is making a pit stop. Harden's in there making a pit stop, as is Bishop. Uh, A.J. Allmendinger coming down, Tim Johnston, Marty Arnett comes down, Brian Blackford comes down. Uh, several drivers making pit stops, Donovan comes down, but several drivers staying on the racetrack. Uh, Hazard stays out, Alfala stays out, Majors, Howard, Adkins, Gillette, Mears, Dan Denea, Jason Dorf, Bill Dorsey, Dylan Pettis, 
making his return to the racetrack. So the top ten drivers stayed on the racetrack. And Daryl, even though we're only seven laps into this one, again, what we've seen in the past is that they get a couple of short runs in the early part of the race, and then everything starts to stretch out with long green flag runs and having fresh tires, even for an extra five or ten laps can mean the world between being on the lead lap at the end of that run or possibly even picking up a win, depending on when exactly it does occur. So a lot of these guys thinking back to previous races, taking fresh rubber every time they get the chance. A couple more drivers coming down pit road here. Jason Dorf making a run down pit road. Kind of surprising to see him take the run down pit road at this point, along with Bill Dorsey. Dorsey coming down pit road and Dave Vincent coming down pit road as well in that number 95 machine. So I'm kind of surprised to see the 82, the 20, and the 95 come down at this point in the race. But, you know, the only people that know what their strategies are are the people in the cars, and far be it for me to second-guess the strategy of one of these drivers. Exactly. There, Of course, those guys did start in the back, so they really aren't losing a whole lot by going back there once again. Maybe a little bit of track position, but... Even so, I think some something of their strategy may have been to try to stay out, lead a lap, get five points, then go ahead and duck in, get tires and gas. The problem is a couple guys up front had that same idea, namely Tom Hazard, Ray Alfala, T.J. Majors, Ryan Howard, uh, as well as the 81 car, excuse me, of Jason Atkins. Uh, he, too, stayed out on this round of pit stops, so that certainly foiled their strategy, but they still have 140-some laps to get back up to the front. We're going green next time by, and that's exactly when it's going to begin. And by the way, uh, I had identified TJ Majors as the Navy-sponsored machine. Well, that's uh, outside of this scenario. This is actually an unsponsored number 83 machine. They've got a brand-new paint scheme, or a newer paint scheme, I should say, on that number 83 machine. We'll see what TJ Majors can pull off here in that number 83 machine. So we'll see what TJ's got in the 83 is uh, people might be surprised to find out how good of a racer, Tony, T.J. Majors really is. Daryl, I mean, if you followed racing to any sort, it really shouldn't surprise you that T.J. does well. In fact, this is how T.J. got discovered was through sim racing. I don't really have time to tell you the entire story as we get ready to go back green, but essentially, Junior took T.J. as a protege from beating him constantly online took him to a mini cup car, took him to a dash car, ran Daytona, Charlotte, and an entire dash series with him. One rookie of the year, also ran some races in his late model street stock as a caution is out once again for trouble. Back out of turn four here on the restart, but TJ ran some races for Junior in the late model and street stock, did pretty well, and, uh, well, now TJ is Junior spotter in the cup series, and, you know, you don't just pick anybody as a spotter, Daryl, because you want somebody you can trust, and a lot of times, the best guy to spot for you is a guy that knows exactly what you're seeing. And personally, as myself, as a spotter for various drivers, being able to sim race helps a lot in knowing what's going on. But for that matter, somebody like TJ, he's been actually to Daytona. He knows exactly what the bump feels like. He's been to Charlotte. He's been to these different places. He knows exactly what Junior is feeling. And Matt, you can show us exactly what some other people are feeling, namely Ricky Harden here on the Shello. Yeah, we're going to watch the uh, restart here. We're watching the 21. He just spins the tires. Not sure if he grabbed the wrong gear or what. 21 Ricky Harden uh, loops it on turn four with Greg Donovan right behind him. And uh, 21 Ricky Harden's going to uh, just stop it there, uh, almost like he's going to the pits. And uh, uh, then he's going to rejoin the field at the back of the pack. Tough break for Ricky Harden here in the number 21 machine as uh, tires just broke loose and ran out of traction on the Hoosier Racing Tires here at Milwaukee. And uh, this is one of those tracks, Tony, that uh, attraction is at a premium. It is. And it's not so much because the asphalt is completely worn out there. Granted, it is. As you see TJ make a big fact of the pit lane there. He thought twice about that one. I mean, granted, the asphalt is a little bit older here, but it's not like Myrtle Beach or Darlington or any place like that. It's just aged a little bit. The biggest thing here, Dale, is the gear you have to run. You've got to put so much torque to those back wheels that a lot of times when you try to hook up 850 horsepower, it doesn't want to hook up when you match the floor. So you've got to be real easy. Make sure those tires are clean. They've got maximum adhesion to the racetrack. And then hope that you're not going to be spinning the tires on the restart. It certainly is an art to get one of these things going without kicking the back end sideways. 
It certainly is. A couple drivers coming down pit road. Ricky Harden came down pit road. Darren Turner, Bill Dorsey, and Dave Vinson all making visits to pit road. Everybody else stays out. And we anticipate, hopefully, a return to green flag racing as we've had two consecutive yellow flags here in this one. In the early going, a couple yellows in the first dozen laps. Not a great start to the DMP Pro Series event here at Milwaukee. But uh, could be a heck of a lot worse. That's for darn sure. And uh, you know as well as I do, Tony, these guys get, them, get themselves straightened out and stressed out, or stretched out a little bit. And we'll see a nice long green flag run here, and that's where your strategy will come into play. It will, Daryl. And again, the more these guys kind of run into this run, they're starting to make their bed for themselves. Some of these guys further back, well, they may have a shot here. Come in. We're in the back anyway. Let's take some tires. Fill it up with fuel. We're almost 15 laps into this. Again, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but in a 150-mile sprint race, that's a pretty that's 10 percent of the race distance. And it can be just that much that leaves you on the racetrack on the lead lap and everybody else has to pit and you trap everybody else to lap down. Then you can sell the race amongst yourselves. So strategy, very important from lap one all the way through lap 150 in one of these DMP Pro Series races, particularly as strong as the competition is. This isn't your typical online league, Daryl, where you've got three or four guys that are really good and everybody else is sort of also ran. Pretty much everybody in this field is pretty darn good in their own right. Yeah, they all pretty much know what uh, what they're doing behind the wheel of a race car. That is for sure. All right, we're getting set here, and I believe this safety car will pull off, if not this time, next time by. So next time by, the safety car should pull off. We had the lights off momentarily, but uh, now we're going to shut them off. So uh, this will give us just enough time to remind you about the OLR TV DVDs. You can pick up a DVD from this event for the $8 pre-order price up until midnight Eastern time, $2.99 shipping and handling. After midnight Eastern time, as Eastern time is the only time that matters, after midnight Eastern time, the price does go back up to the normal $11 price, and it's still a good bargain at $11. I can tell you that, um, that John Spence, my announcing buddy, over at uh, Lee USA Speedway is right now, I believe, if not tuned into OLR TV, then sitting home watching an OLR TV DVD, one from just a few weeks ago. The Pocono race uh, went to Pete Falcone, who is uh, the announcer for NEMA, the Northeast Midget Association, and for New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and I believe he was watching that one earlier on today, so... A couple of big race fans green, 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 green. have some DVDs in hand. Green flag flies. We are back underway. This ought to look good on the DVD. Thomas Hazard pulling into turn number one. And never mind the yellow flag flies as uh, yellow fever is striking. Dr. Green paging Dr. Green. Your presence is desperately requested here in Wisconsin at the Milwaukee Mile. Dr. Green paging Dr. Green. And Daryl, no pun intended, but Jody Green, the car that brought out this caution, got out of control as he came out of turn four for the restart. And that uh, platinum number 13, well, uh, it's looking just a little bit tarnished right now as Matt tries to go ahead and queue up the replay for us down the truck. This, of course, third caution of the night here on lap 15. Matt, show us what happened on this restart. Uh, pretty much the same as the last one, but he's not going to spin the tires. I think he's actually going to get a little bit of help here. And it looks like the, uh, uh, nope, he spins the tires. Almost the same exact spot as Ricky Harden and the 13 car. Uh, uh, he's just going to loop around, hits the inside wall, and then uh, he's going to pull to a stop and uh, get ready to pull it in the pits again. Tough break for Jody Green, and... That'll bring us under our third consecutive caution here in this one. And, uh, you know, we, we had a really good start to this one, Tony. And then uh, we, we get the yellow flag. And then the next thing you know, we can't get into turn one under green flag conditions. Hopefully that changes with this next restart. Exactly, Daryl. And what happens a lot of times when you're back there further in the field, you get that chain reaction effect. And for somebody that may never have raced before, it seems like, okay, what's the big deal? 
what happens is you start to go, you start to go, and you got to check up, and you got all that weight moving around, Daryl, and you mash the gas again. You kind of forget where you're at, and you, you're, you know you're going to lose time. You mash the gas, you start to try to go, and tires start spinning on you, and before you realize what's hit you, well, you're hitting something else because you've lost all control of the back end, your nose first, into this case, the inside wall here at Milwaukee. So tough break for Jody Green. That's going to end his night early, Daryl, and uh, certainly not the kind of finish that he was expecting. You know, Tony, oftentimes we talk about uh, the drivers on the track, and sometimes we forget to mention the folks that really help us bring these broadcasts to the people. One, of course, is the people that tune in week in and week out every single time OLR TV hits the air, whether it's DMP or TNT or Bob's Racing League. Uh, but the other one is our great sponsors, and tonight's race is brought to you by the Kicks for Kids, David Akers Kicks for Kids organization. You can check them out at www.davidacreskicksforkids.org. You might want to jot that one down. davidacreskicksforkids.org. Also brought to you by the great folks at The Sim Factory. You can check them out at thesimfactory.com, creators of this particular piece of software. And by DMP Online Racing. Keep up with the happenings of your favorite DMP drivers at dmp-racing.com and by Butt Kicker at www.thebuttkicker.com That's thebuttkicker.com After all, everybody needs their butt kick every now and then. And by Arca Sim Racing at arcasimracing.com where you can go and order this piece of software, Arca Sim Racing 2008. Of course, by onlineracing.com where they remind you, don't dream it. Live it. Don't forget about the OLR land coming up in mid-July, less than a month away. As a matter of fact, just about three weeks away for the OLR land. And you're getting a free tour of Darlington Speedway. The price is back down to below $50. They want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to take part in the OLR land in Florence, South Carolina, July 18th through July 20th. And, of course, by High Speed Radio, the pres presenters of your audio-only simulcast of this particular broadcast, High Speed Radio, because life's too short to slow down. And right now at High Speed Radio, 2008 Archive for Lee USA Speedway, including, Tony, the fog race we were just talking about. That's already up from this past Saturday. The archive, or audio archive, we should say, from the fog race is up this past Saturday. And I'll tell you right now, I was there. I got to watch it, had the call. And listening to the Small Block Super Archive still gave me goosebumps. It was quite the intense night. Yeah, Daryl, anytime you go to a racetrack and see a good show, I don't care what it is, street stocks, mini stocks, super modifieds, late models, heck, even a drag car now and then. Anytime you go to the racetrack and you see a good show, it always gets you pumped up. And you really, really get excited to go back. Of course, as a competitor, you have a bad week or two. <laughs> Sometimes it's the opposite effect. You are really have to go to the racetrack this week. What weird thing is going to break this week that never breaks on anybody else's car? So it can work both ways. But I certainly wish I was there, Daryl. It's always a treat to watch Super Modified as it is. But in fog, <laughs> that would have to have been interesting. Over 100 miles an hour coming into turn number three and not having any idea where turn number three is. I asked the race winner, Eddie Whitcomb Jr., what it was like, and he goes, well, just imagine trying to drive with your eyes closed. And that racetrack, by the way, is a three-eighths mile. It's a three-eighth mile oval, uh, and it, it, we get some of the best racing in the world. LeeUSASpeedway.com is the website. Lee, L-E-E, -E, USA speedway.com if you're in the new hampshire area come on out and check us out on friday night we will get you on your feet that my friends is a promise and uh, as i heard on tv today if you're not on the edge you're taking up way too much green, green, space green, green, green. we're getting set to go green flag flies we're back underway can they make it to turn number one tony and the last two cars cross our finish line now the answer will be yes Everybody works their way into turn number one. A little bit easier on the shift up, or excuse me, the shift down or up, or whatever you want to call it. Getting through the gearbox, 
and they make it through turns one and two and into turn number three. Already trying to make some moves are Dylan Pettis, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and A.J. Allmendinger back around the eighth, ninth, and tenth spot. Your top two, though, begin to pull away a little bit from T.J. Majors, and Ray Alfala is looking racy. Now to the inside of Tom Hazard in turn one. I'll follow trying to get a nose to the inside of Hazard. Hazard gives him plenty of room on a turn number two. Hazard now on the high side, keeping that motor wound up, and here comes Frey Alfala. The butt kicker live, Chevrolet down to the inside of Thomas Hazard. Hazard up to the outside, Alfala back to the lead. Hazard still battling back on the high side. They'll work their way up at turn number four. It's going to be Alfala across the line. Hazard still there on the top. Hazard will drive it in deep on the outside of turn number one to try to pull back alongside Ray Alfala. Nothing there, however, as they work off turn number two. Ray Alfala has got the lead by Carly over Tom Hazard. TJ Majors is sucked right back up onto the back bumper of Tom Hazard. It is single file for your entire top seven as they work into turn number three. And, Daryl, one thing you have to wonder... It's a lot harder to make the pass that Ray Alfala did there on Tom Hazard. He drove it very deep into turn number three, and all too often we've seen guys drive it in so deep there, either the back end comes around or they hit that dreaded curb down there, and it sends them up the racetrack into the guy outside of them. Alfala hit it just perfect, kept control of the car, and made a magnificent pass on Tom Hazard as we see Ryan Howard behind him for fourth, or excuse me, for third on TJ Majors trying to do the exact same thing. And that's happening as T.J. Majors is trying to set up Thomas Hazard. And that's one of the complications of a racetrack like this, Tony. In order to set somebody up for the pass, sometimes you've got to arc it in real high to be able to hit that lower exit coming out of the corner and get the run down the back stretch. But when you do arc it in real high, you open up the door for the driver behind you. So you've got to play offense and defense all at the same time. And, Tony, that's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not, Daryl. Again, just like you said, because it's a flat racetrack like this, as you watch off of TJ's back bumper, you open up that door, and if a guy has really got his car rolling through the center of the corner, and it's turning freely, right there, right there, as you watch, you see Hazard nudge <laughs> Ray Alfala just in front of him. But if it's turning really well in the center, or rolling in the center very well, you can pick up that throttle and close into that hole. The downside of that, though, Daryl, is a lot of times the guy is drifted up and is diamonding the corner trying to get that straight run off. Well, he may not know you're there. and may come across your bumper and take both of you out as we have our fourth caution of the evening here. Trouble further back with Darren Turner in that 41 machine. Tough break for Darren, Daryl. Yeah, Darren Turner in the 23rd position right now after the uh, trouble here. We'll get a quick view of this as Matt Thomas cues it up and gets it all set to show you why we are under yellow flag conditions for the one, two, three, fourth time here tonight at the Milwaukee Mile. So Matt Thomas hitting the old rewind button. Matt Thomas has got the replay. Matt. We're going to watch uh, Darren in the number 41. Looks like he's trying to crank it down a little bit through the apex of the corner here. And off the corner, he's just going to break loose. It looks like off turn number two. And he's just going to do a little short self spin off turn number two. And a 41 machine, Darren Turner, he's going to loop it back around, come in for some fuel and tires, along with many others. A lot of drivers coming down pit road. We'll keep our eyes on what's going on. I see Alfala and Hazard and Majors and Howard. Junior stays out. Bishop stays out. Pettis will stay out as uh, pitch stops happening. We'll pitch it down real quick to Josh Fredericks for some quick coverage on pit road. Josh? Thanks a lot, Phil. We got Al Fallon and Hazard down here at the end of pit road. Left side tires going on both of those cars. I'm predicting the number two car is going to be headed off because he kind of got in his box a little bit sooner as they do pull off the pit road. Al Fallon is going to take the lead. Hazard second, Majors third, Blackford fourth, Atkins fifth. And I believe we're going to commercial break, Daryl. Indeed we are. We're going to go ahead, take a quick break. We'll come back with more of the David Akers Kick for Kids 150 as part of the DMP Pro Series here on OLR TV, the Sim Factory DMP Pro Series. Back with more after this. Uh... 
inside, clear outside. You're doing great, keep it up. White flag, one more lap. Go low, go low. testing team and of course the online racing.com staff well if you didn't get it from thomas you're not using the wheel thomas enterprises the absolute best racing wheels on the market if you're not using a thomas you're not in control next week nascar's top drivers invade the great lakes state for a Father's Day battle at Michigan International Speedway. The Irish Hills of Brooklyn yeah. host one of the fastest tracks in the Sprint Cup. Wide sweeping can go three and four wide to get out in front. Carl Edwards took the checkered flag last year. I'm Michigan winner Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson will be medal green flag action. Don't miss the high speed racing from Michigan International next week exclusively on NASCAR Hot Pass. Dale Earnhardt Jr. stays out to lead a lap. Now he'll come down pit road, give that top spot up to Keith Bishop. That'll bring us down to Josh Fredericks. Josh, what did Dale do? Did he just uh, grab some tires and some fuel and head on back out or what? Yeah, Daryl, he came across the radio and said, guys, we're going to stay out there and lead a lap. Come down pit road, surrender the lead to somebody else. So he's going to come back out of the pits. He'll be in the 20th position on the tail end of the lead lap, Daryl. That'll hand the lead over to Keith Bishop. Dylan Pettis sits in second. A.J. Allmendinger up in third. Del Mears is fourth. Fifth belongs to Rick Savage. Sixth is Tommy Ryan. Seventh is Ray Alfala. Eighth belongs to Thomas Hazard. Green, green, Ninth green, green, is green. T.J. Majors. Tenth is Brian Blackford. Green flag flies. We are back underway as Pettis all over the back bumper of Bishop. And here comes Allmendinger. Allmendinger down to the inside. Battle for second spot. A.J. got a whale of a run on Dylan Pettis. As Dylan was trying to set up Keith Bishop. Forgot completely about Almendinger in the rearview mirror, and that is going to cost him second spot. AJ Almendinger bypasses Dylan Pettis, and will take position number two, and he now will set his sights on Keith Bishop. And Daryl Keith just did exactly what we talked about just a minute ago. Slid up in the center of the corner, trying to get the run off, and AJ almost had a nose under him. But right now, that will stabilize about two car lengths between all of your top fours. They're back in one and two. Top four starting to stabilize. Allmendinger slides up the racetrack just a little bit. Here comes Pettis right back down to the inside. Pettis drops back in line behind Allmendinger. Perhaps catch a sniff of whatever draft you can find here. Allmendinger again slides up. Pettis tries to stuff it in. Allmendinger slams the door. Pettis had to jump on the binders. And behind Pettis, they're side by side again. Del Mears and Ray Alfala. Alfala, fresh skins on that number two. Butt kicker live Chevrolet. He'll try to bypass the Guinness beer Chevrolet of Del Mears, and off of turn number two, he will in fact do so. Tom Hazard going to try to follow suit. He too will dive to the low line to bypass Del Mears as they work through turn three. T.J. Majors there as well. He too going to try to take over that spot one more time. As well, oh yeah, Daryl Rick Savage, who we say started in the back and likes to work his way forward. That's the 40 car already in the top ten. 
Rick Savage now trying to climb up into the number seven position as Dale Mir slides way up the racetrack as the third generation driver slides up the racetrack. That's going to cost him at least two or three more spots as now A.J. Allmendinger has his hands full of Dylan Pettis once again. Allmendinger to the high side. Pettis has the run to the inside now. They're side by side coming out of turn number four. Pettis down low, Allmendinger up high. Alfala moves up into the fourth position right behind Allmendinger and Pettis. And Alfala has the second best seat in the house. The best seat belongs to those of you watching here live on OLR TV. Allmendinger could not get the bite. He's looking for on the high side of the racetrack there. He's going to come down. Wow, I don't think there was quite a hole there. Just scared Dylan Pettis out of the way. Pettis slides up the racetrack. Three wide nearly for a second as Allmendinger will reclaim that second spot. And now Ray Alfaro with the proper line to turn three is going to try to use that momentum to his advantage to bypass Allmendinger. But Allmendinger, no, will slam the door in turn one. He'll now leave a little bit of a lane for Ray Alfaro, who will in fact stick his nose in there. Allmendinger back to third once again as Alfaro and Hazard, along with TJ Majors, try to make their way back to the front. This side-by-side -side battle is continuing and Keith Bishop loves it because Bishop is checking out on the rest of this field. Alfala now with sole possession of the number two spot. You can see out the rear bumper of Ray Alfala's number two butt kicker live sponsored entry. Allmendinger still to the high side. Thomas Hazard to the inside. And here comes the number 83 of TJ Majors. Side-by-side, -side, they touch coming out of turn number two. TJ thinks about making it three wide just for a second, but he'll think better of it. Allmendinger slides across the nose of Tom Hazard. Allmendinger must have a spotter that's absolutely you know, cracked up on Red Bull right now because he is clearing him awfully darn quick. Nonetheless, he hasn't hit anybody coming across their nose yet. Allmendinger will retain the third position, and Hazard going to slide wide. That will open the door for TJ Majors to try to overtake him for the fourth spot, Daryl. We may have to get the Red Bull for Allmendinger's spotter. I think with that situation is Allmendinger goes, am I clear? And the spotter goes, whatever. Yeah, pretty much before the spotter can even key the button there, Allmendinger has already made the decision for himself to go ahead and slide across the nose of whoever happens to be behind him. And I think everybody in this group has seen that. And they're going to be a little bit more careful trying to get oh. AJ out of the way. And in fact, TJ now will move AJ Allmendinger and say, you know what? You're not going to come across my nose. I'll just move you right out of the way. That's exactly what happened. But TJ is going to have to pay for that. He'll have to check up just for a second. And AJ will, in fact, maintain that third spot. Ahead of him, oh. we've seen Ray Alfala pull away. He's starting to catch his TJ. Bottles off turn four. Pettis now will dive to the inside. A miraculous save by TJ Majors. And now he, Pettis, and Allmendinger will go three wide into turn one. Allmendinger to the high side of the racetrack will lose two spots in one corner, Daryl. Allmendinger got tired of the rough play from T.J. Majors, and Majors got the rough play from Dylan Pettis. Pettis now will look to the inside of Majors. Majors slams that door shut. Adkins to the inside of Allmendinger. Great racing action here from the Milwaukee Mile. Whoever said flat track racing is boring, Daryl? They've never seen the DMP Pro Series in Milwaukee. It's Pettis. Pushes T.J. Majors down the front straightaway. And last time he pushed him through turns three and four, nearly pushing him through turns one and two, but he'll turn left and get the way on T.J. They'll be side by side in the turn number three. Majors up high, Pettis down low. Pettis now with the opening. He'll drift up the racetrack just a little bit. Majors gives a little bit more room now, squeezes him down. In turn number four, out of turn number four. Majors right up against the wall, brushes it. Pettis will take over the third spot. That's going to open the door, Daryl, for Jason Atkins and Ryan Howard. We haven't talked about them already all night. As you see TJ get roughed up once again by Ryan Howard. TJ pinching these guys, and he is taking the door donuts for it. As Jason Atkins now will look on the inside, Dylan Pettis for the third spot. Atkins will, in fact, get that spot with Ryan Howard and that Dr. Pepper machine trying to follow suit. Daryl, the top side is not where you want to be, it looks like, but the guy's second line looks like maybe where you want to be because... They're the guys that are passing everybody. As your top two, though, they have pulled away from this battle by a considerable margin, nearly three seconds, as Ray Alfala actually just passed Keith Bishop for the lead. Ray Alfala drove by Keith Bishop as if Bishop didn't have new tires, and Ray Alfala did have newer tires. Hmm, go figure. 
Exactly, Darrell. You know, it's a pretty darn good race, though, when you completely miss the battle for the lead because the entertainment around third through eighth is just that good. Things back here that seem to settle out just a little bit. They are single file pretty much through this entire group. And, uh, oh, yeah, the guy back there in about 11th spot, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's made his way up from 20th already on this run. Give a report also, A.J. Allmendinger. Josh, having some problems, it sounds like. Yeah, I uh, just got the uh, word from the A.J. Allmendinger crew. His internet is gone, so he will not finish another race here in the DMP Pro Series. Oh, my goodness. Right now, you've got to wonder, first of all, uh, who does A.J. Allmendinger have for his internet provider so I never sign up with them? Um, and second of all, does he have an option here? Does he have an option of somewhere else to go as Marty Arnett trying to get the inside run on Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Jr. worked his way back up into the top 10. Let's not forget, he made a late pitch stop, the most recent yellow flag. Went all the way back to 20th. He's worked his way back up into 10th. So Earnhardt Jr. on the move. If you're A.J. Allmendinger right now, you're on the phone looking for a brand new ISP. And Daryl, I don't know who he has, but I know where he lives. And I know what's available over there. And fact is, well, I've got one of those providers myself. Yeah. The other one I don't have. I never have the problem, so unless there's something over there in Burkdale, I really don't know what the deal is because, well, it's one of two things. It's the green one or it's the one with the little eyeball. That's all I'll tell you. If you can figure it out from there, happy, you know, good job for you. That's pretty much all we'll say there. But the battle right now, Daryl, again, Back from about 7th through 11th, you've got Savage, Gillette, Junior, Marty Arnett, TJ Majors, all in this little battle right here. And just as you said, Junior has worked his way up from the back of the field, and he is absolutely trucking towards that top spot. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now driving like a mother trucker, if you know what I mean. He's worked his way up into the ninth position as TJ Majors dropping back through this field a little bit. Sets his sights on Mike Gillette once again. We say it all the time. Multiple time winner here on OLR TV. But right now the attention falls on the number 76 machine, that Unical 76 for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Winner of the last two races for this DMP Tim Factory Pro Series. As now here comes Gillette down to the inside of Savage. Rick Savage down to spot and he's going to lose more. Junior fills the hole. Dale Jr. does indeed pull up to the door. That number 40, Recover Company Chevrolet from Washington. Savage drives it hard in the turn number three, though, trying to hold on to that spot. Cannot do it, though, as he'll lose another one to Marty Arnett. As they come out of turn four, Arnett slides up. Tried to be clear of Savage, but he wasn't. Arnett's going to battle side by side, but he will lose that spot. Savage will in the turn number one. Mike Gillette now the next victim on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s hit list. The pork it ain't easy dodge. And uh, he's going to have to make that thing about as bad as a pick, Daryl, if he wants Junior to stay behind him. He's certainly going to have to make it fatter than most pigs out there as we've got ourselves a battle heating up for the third spot. Ryan Howard to the inside. That's for second, as a matter of fact. Howard to the inside of Adkins. Ryan Howard will pick up second. Adkins down to third. Here comes Thomas Hazard up into fourth. And your former race leader, Keith Bishop, down to fifth. But I'm thinking next time we get a yellow, he's going to take tires. Yeah, Daryl, he's been out there for uh, about 40 laps, I believe, of an unofficial count on that set of tires. And we talked about it earlier. You get a couple of cautions early in the race, and you get this big, long green flag run. And you have to play pit strategy to kind of hope you get on the right cycle. Well, unfortunately, at this juncture of the race, Keith Bishop is not on the right cycle. He has already been relegated from the top spot back to fifth. Of course, if we were to get a caution just now, Daryl, sometime in the near future, I don't think Keith would have a problem with that. He'd be up there in the top five and have a solid shot, come in, get four tires, and be back on sequence with everybody else. But right now, it is certainly not working out for him. Ray Alfala, who passed him a little while ago, he is out to nearly a three, over a three-and-a-half second lead. Over second place, Howard, and Atkins, Hazard, Keith Bishop in fifth, followed by Dylan Pettis, Mike Gillette, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Marty Arnett, and Rick Savage are top ten. 11th spot currently is held by Rick Savage, or Ricky Harden, I apologize, Steven Steffen in 12th, 13th is Tim Johnson, 14th is Vincent, 15th is Dan Denayer, 
then followed by Bill Dorsey in 16th, and Tommy Ryan, TJ Majors, Brian Blackford, and Del Mears to round out the top 20 as 20 cars remain on the lead lap. Jason Dorf still out there, but two laps down in the number 82. And Daryl TJ Majors, another one of those drivers. We I talked to him a little bit before during practice, and he's just, he was really concerned that he was slow. And, uh, well, fact is, it looks like that's starting to come back to bite him, either because he cannot get those tires to work for him. We just can't quite figure out this setup. This is a fixed setup division. It's everybody driving the exact same things under the car. It's all about driver, crew, and pit strategy. As you watch back here around the 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th spot, the battle between Tim Johnson and Dan Denaire. Denaire, not exactly having the world's greatest run, but it is still early. They're about a third of the way through this Kicks for Kids 150. But Dan, bypassing Tim Johnson, will move himself up to the 14th spot, Daryl. So Dan working his way slowly towards the front. But he's going to need a caution if he wants to get anywhere close to that top 10. Yeah, he certainly is. That top 10 trying to pull away just a little bit. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Denayer up towards that top 10, even without a yellow flag. I think Denayer's good enough getting on and off from pit road uh, that he'll be okay. Dale Earnhardt Jr. doing battle with Marty Arnett. Jr. gives a little tap to Arnett in the corner. Backs off and lets Arnett save it. Now Jr. will peek down to the inside through three and four. Arnett giving a little bit of room on the inside as they come out of turn number four. Jr. may take the shot down low. No, he'll drop back in line behind the number 25 of Arnett. And again, Daryl, you have to wonder, could Jr. having charged up to the field have used stuff up a little bit sooner than he would have wanted to? It's now he tries to go back once again on the inside of Marty Arnett. They will indeed drag race door to door into turn number three. Junior will get that spot as ahead of him. He sees Dylan Pettis, Chief Bishop, trying to inhale them as well. Is Junior also up there as Mike Gallette? So Junior got a couple more spots, possibly drifting back to him. Crunch and munch, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been eating his way through this field down to the inside of Bishop, and oh, Bishop almost gets into the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Unical number 76 machine. Dale Earnhardt Jr., so much better on corner entry than anybody else is. That's where he's making up his time, is pulling into the corner. But the problem is, Tony, he's using those brakes a little bit more than he might want to. Exactly, Daryl. If you do charge into the corner and you're gaining a lot of speed like that, you can burn the brakes up. But I'm watching the rotor. Look at the Dylan Pettis machine. He bypasses everything on that machine. It's cherry red rotor rides. Front rotors, rear rotors. He is using them up. Junior's car, not really glowing the brakes at all. And it makes me wonder, Daryl, if he's really rolling the entry and rolling the center, not using that much brake, just backing off early, leaning on the brake pedal, and backing the corner up again. And we saw it at Nashville. We saw it at Kansas. Junior is a master of saving tires. And again, you watch him just kind of roll the car to turn number one, let it slide up, and he'll feather it back into the gas. And again, there, I think it's just a matter of Junior grew up on a flat track, Myrtle Beach Speedway that had very little grip. He learned how to take your tires, how to roll the center of the corner without overcharging the entry, and that certainly comes back to help him on a plate like Milwaukee. Yeah, you know, people talk about these flatter tracks that don't have a lot of grip, and one of the tracks is my home track, the USA Speedway. Not a lot of grip out there. Some very old pavement. A lot of the drivers say, ah, the pavement's so old, you just can't get any grip. Uh, and the response is, it makes you a better driver. And you can see the evidence of that right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, as we look at those tires, is not running that machine all that hard. He just has perfect control over that car. He took us for a ride not too long ago in that number 76 machine here on OLR TV and we got to experience what he was doing and he's, he's literally rolling off the throttle just a little bit earlier being real gentle with those brakes and let's face back we're talking about saving tires and if you're stomping on the brakes a lot you're using up your tires quite a bit back up towards the front Ryan Howard is doing battle with the trailer town sponsored number 81 machine of Atkins and Howard still just a car length over Atkins right now in that second spot. Jason has not been very aggressive to get by Ryan, just trying to take a little bit different line, a little bit wider entry into the corner again to try to roll that center a little bit more, possibly get around that Dr. Pepper Chevrolet, but it hasn't worked for him quite yet. These guys, a significant gap from them 
all the way back to, or excuse me, back from Ray Alfala, who is your leader. Alfala is at the line now. These guys are right in the exit of turn number four, so a significant margin from Ray Alfala all the way back to Ryan Howard, nearly six seconds, Daryl. So this battle is pretty much in a different zip code from your leader. Yeah, Ray Alfala has checked out on this field, and if it stays green, that's a very good thing for Ray Alfala with this one-mile oval. Not that concerned about draft, not that concerned about being able to have somebody to help you through the corners. As a matter of fact, you kind of want to get away and take off and hide from the rest of these drivers. However, should the yellow flag come out, you got to wonder how hard is Ray Alfala driving that car. I wouldn't think right now Ray's driving that car all that hard, uh, just kind of settling into a groove. Uh, but should that yellow flag come out, perhaps Howard or Atkins might have something for him. Well, not a yellow. He's gone, man. He is he gone. He is, Daryl. In fact, he's starting to close in on TJ Majors. TJ, the final car in the lead lap, and was up in the top ten not even 20 laps ago and already has fallen off that much to where Ray Alfala can see him and is nearly in uh, jeopardy of going a lap down his TJ. So TJ praying for a caution. And Daryl... I think, again, we talked about it a few laps ago, the way these races like to get a good, long, green flag front, and you got to be on the right pit strategy. Well, fact is, even if the caution were to come out now, Alfala, Howard, everybody, Daryl, is going to come in for four brand-new skins and start everything all over once again. So even if they had something for Alfala between the tire difference, Daryl, I have a feeling that Ray is just out, absolutely going to out-drive them and out-save them as far as equipment and tires go, because right now... You don't pull out to a seven-second lead on 10-lap newer tires without knowing something about making them work for a long period of time. Yeah, you certainly don't, and that's exactly what Ray Alfala has done. 6.82 seconds over Ryan Howard, and that gap has grown every single lap. And I think what's really working out well for Ray Alfala is the other drivers, the, the lap-down drivers, are getting out of his way. T.J. Majors. The most recent to do that, Majors drifts up to the high side. Ray Alfala able to drive his line and just pitch the car into the corner, drive the car out of the corner, no big deal. He's catching the lap traffic at the point that he needs to catch them. Catch him going in. You don't want to catch him in the middle of the corner. No, you don't, Daryl, because it completely screws up your rhythm. It screws up your acceleration point, screws up your braking point, and it takes you a lap or two to pick it back up. I mean, you're not going to completely ruin your run there, but it, it can mess with your head just a little bit. And Alfala having to catch him this lap traffic works his stuff just a little bit harder. Of course, some of what you're seeing are those bright orange lug nuts of that butt kicker live machine. This guy's, of course, painting them to try to make sure that the crew can see them when they try to hit five off and five on. It's a little bit easier to see when they're a contrasting color, but even when they get covered with a bunch of brake dust, Daryl, they're impossible to see. Yeah, they certainly are. Plus, it just, let's face it, it looks cool to have the orange lug nuts on that uh, number two butt kicker live Chevrolet as Alfala has just checked out 7.165 seconds. The gap between Alfala and Ryan Howard. And Howard pretty much kind of settling into a groove. He's got Adkins on the back bumper, but Adkins not pushing him all that hard. Thomas Hazard pretty much solo on the racetrack. Gillette pretty much by his lonesome as is Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dave Vincent up into the seventh spot, all by his lonesome. Marty Arnett all alone. Dylan Pettis alone. Rick Savage alone. Ricky Harden. Keith Bishop. Bill Dorsey uh, could have a battle going with Dan Denayer here for not too long here. That could be a battle for the number 13 position. And uh, to quote my hero, my announcing hero, the icon in my eyes, that of course be the great legendary John Spence. That's where the racing is back in the pack. It is, Daryl. This happening 22 seconds in arrears of your leaders, De or excuse me, uh, Ray Alfala, and that's, if you want to do it the other way, it's about eight seconds in front of him, so just about a third of a lap in front of your leader is this battle that you see Bill Dorsey looking on the top of the racetrack, trying to find some sort of grip to end the mayor, trying to find grip on the bottom, and he'll find a little bit more than Dorsey as they work down the front straightaway get his nose under that TSW Evolution Machine of Bill Dorsey and Dan Denayer, the DMT Racing League Chevrolet. He will work right around that white line, the yellow curbing. You see where he's been into the concrete or into someone. Dorsey now going to try the crossover move. Nothing there. Denayer has the run off the corner. 
Hawks move Dan Denayer up to position 13 and Bill Dorsey back to 14th, Daryl. As again, like you said, this is where the racing is. Tim Johnston right behind this group as well, and they're getting ready to, in they're getting ready to inhale the 67 machine of Keith Fisher. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just got passed up. There's some damage on the right side of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s number 76 machine. Possibly uh, has gotten into the wall. Dave Vincent has passed up Dale Earnhardt Jr. And that car seems just a little bit off. You've got to wonder if the damage is helping that situation right now for Jr. Never can be, Daryl, because you lose a little bit of side force every time you creak lit one of the sides of these cars. And for many years, all oh, the side really didn't matter that much. It's behind the front fenders. And then everybody started learning, well, if we pitch the side like this and put the car in y'all, you can get a lot of downforce on the side of this car. And if you look at some of these cars, and as some people have dubbed them the Twisted Sister, there's a reason to that. It's, it's all for side force. I mean, these cars don't have the side window that NASCAR mandates on their Speedway cars. It's an open window on the right side, so Every little bit of extra side force you can get on one of these cars certainly matters. And anytime you smack the wall like it appears that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has, it takes away from that side force. And when you don't have as much of that as the other guy, well, guess what? That's a little bit of a disadvantage for you. You've got to make it up somehow. And right now, Jr. looks like on this long run, nearly 50 laps long, Daryl, tires possibly start to go away on that Unicow machine. Yeah, Taylor Earnhardt Jr. could really use some brand new Hoosier racing tires. Uh, I don't know if you're going to see him come down here relatively soon. As we're going to see a battle for the number two spot, perhaps Adkins has gone to the inside. Yes, he has of Ryan Howard. Adkins low, Howard high. Now Adkins has the number two spot. Ryan Howard sits in third. They close on TJ Majors. And the reason they're working so hard is here comes Thomas Hazard. Hazard's closing in on these drivers. I think Adkins saw Hazard coming and said, Sorry, Ryan, it's time to go. Yep, Mike Galletta also trying to close in on that trio of drivers as well. Galette in the fifth position, having a very good run. Uh, didn't quite have the finish that he wanted back in Kansas. He's certainly trying to make up for that here at Milwaukee, Darrell. Yeah, he certainly is. You're, you're talking about uh, side fight and side this and side that. And Put it in yaw and use the body panel to that and the body panel to this. I don't need that crap. Give me a super modified any day of the week. As uh, now Del Mears with some fresh tires. Now we're able to see the difference between fresh tires and older tires. Mears able to pull away a little bit from these drivers. Mears has been struggling thus far in this one. As now Adkins just way up the racetrack. Majors has a fender underneath Adkins. And now here comes Howard. The battle for second rages on out of turn number four. And Tommy Ryan comes to the pit lane, the 43 machine. He'll dive to the attention of his crew. Josh Fredericks is down there in that northern tool and equipment pit for Tommy Ryan. Yeah, Tommy Ryan actually just left lap down. About two or three laps to go, sitting in 18th position now, coming down to get four fresh tires. Hopefully we stay green here and he can get his lap back. But uh, left side tires going on that machine now showing two laps down for Tommy Ryan as he pulls out of his pit box. And as he this pulls out, the battle is far from over as Ryan Howard has that second spot. Adkins up into third. Thomas Hazard is fourth. Mike Gillette is fifth. And they are all right there in the same camera shot. And don't forget about the number 83 of T.J. Major. Sure, he's a lap down, but he could still be a factor in this deal as Keith Bishop will come down pit road this time by Keith Bishop, the number 67 machine in the 14th spot coming down pit road. So Bishop will get some tires and some service. And here comes Atkins. Atkins looks to the inside battle for second spot. Tom Haz is going to try to follow Jason Atkins in that trailer town Chevrolet along the bottom side of the racetrack. Atkins will clear Howard, but no, Hazard cannot get under that Dr. Pepper machine. Your second through fifth place cars nose to tail into turn number three. Now, Daryl, you have to wonder, are any of these guys going to try the short pit game to out-duel Ray Alfala? They, of course, can make it from here. It's about 70-some laps, from, or about 68 laps, excuse me, from the conclusion of this event 67 that time by. Will they short pit it? get the advantage of the fresh tires? to make up ground on Ray Alfaro, or are they going to try to wait it out, see if Ray pits a little bit sooner, and then maybe try to get a caution? If I had to be a bet man, I'd go for the short pit right now, Daryl, and spread out as this field is on the racetrack. 
derived from the rear bumper of Ryan Howard's machine as we're hearing Ray Alfaro, your leader, on pit road. Lead car on pit road as we'll go down to Josh Fredericks. Ray Alfaro coming to the attention of the Butt Kicker Live crew. Yeah, Ray came over the radio last time said, guys, I'm coming in 65 laps to go. We can make it on fuel. My tires are great. They come down, I'm going to put four fresh tires on that Butt Kicker Live machine. Hopefully not to go a lap down here in case a yellow were to come out as he rolls out of pit road. Will not be a lap down, so he's uh, going to be in really good shape as these guys cycle through. He's going to be 13th coming out of pit road, uh, and if, if the crew makes a mistake under green flag, you go a lap down. That's just all there is to it. I'll follow. The reason he's not a lap down was that 10-plus second lead that he had momentarily, and uh, it's worth it. It is definitely worth it. Atkins now battle with the top spot. Atkins on the high side. Thomas Hazard will come down to the inside, and Hazard will pick up the top spot. Rick Savage now battling for second spot. Savage looking to the inside. Now Savage battles for the lead. Coupon. Coupon. Two for one. And here comes Ray Alfala again. Alfala nabbed for penalty. Alfala has a drive through a penalty, Daryl. Cost him just enough to lose a lap. As you see, Tom Hazard, now your leader over Jason Atkins. This could be a pivotal moment in the race for Ray Alfala. Lap 85, nab for speeding on pit road. Drive through penalty for the butt kicker live machine. Your current DMP Pro Series point runner up. Mark that one down in your notebook again as one of possibly one of the pivotal points of this race, Daryl. If he can find a way to come back and win this deal, um, he will definitely cement his spot as one of the better drivers in all of sim racing. Gillette looks down to the inside of Howard, battle for the third spot as Gillette will pick up position number three. Howard battling back on the high side. Gillette in the pork and it easy sponsored entry on the inside out of turn number four. Gillette will have the spot. And Daryl, just to follow up on the Ray Alfala bit, if Pitts, if the pit strategy here and the pits cycle through, Alfaro won't be in that bad of a shape. He may be at about second or third, but he'll be in a spot where it's manageable for him to still win this race or definitely have a good showing. The problem is going to come, Daryl, if between now and the end of this pit stop cycle, we get a caution. That will certainly throw a wrench into it. If it were to happen now, Alfaro would be the recipient of the lucky dog, the free patch. That wouldn't be such a big problem. If somebody else were to happen to go a lap down ahead of him and the cost were to come out, that again could certainly pose an issue as Alfala works through these leaders trying to unlap himself the hard way following Stephen Steffen by Mike Gillette there in the third spot. Alfala is a man on a mission for more reasons than one, Daryl. He knows he needs to get back onto that lead lap. Get around these leaders, get back onto the lead lap and now he won't worry about it if he can get back on the lead lap. We make it three wide. Alfala thinks about it, then thinks better. Drops right back in line behind Steven Steffen. Steffen can't hurt Alfala right now, so it's not a big deal. Alfala will try to get around Hazard. He'll try to push Steven Steffen past Hazard, and that'll put Steffen up another lap, and that'll put Ray Alfala back on the lead lap, and that's exactly what Ray Alfala needed. Now Alfala will pass up Steven Steffen, and Ray Alfala tries to check out once again, albeit from the very tail of the lead lap. Now Daryl Alfala is in the clear. No matter what happens, he still is a very viable threat to win this race. As we look once again back at those leaders, he just bypassed Tom Hazard, Jason Atkins, and Mike Gillette. Ryan Howard has fallen off that battle just a little bit. As has Dave Vincent. We haven't talked about him up there here recently, but Dave Vincent is within two seconds of the lead. He started way back, pretty much back in the field, and he at the moment has worked himself into a top five position. So Dave Vincent having a very good run here during the middle stages of this David Akers Kicks for Kids 150. We're closing in on the two-thirds complete point for this race as now I'll follow, I mean, uh, Hazard, I apologize, so used to see a rail follow at the front of that uh, front of this field. Thomas Hazard, big wiggle. Now here comes T.J. Majors trying to stick his nose to the inside. Majors with some fresher tires. He'd like to get back up and get one of his laps back. T.J. Majors showing as two laps down. It'll go to one lap down as he works his way by 
the number nine machine. Battle for second. Gillette down to the inside of Atkins. And Mike Gillette up into his position number two. And we've been waiting a long time to see Gillette win once again on OLR TV. Could tonight be the night for the number 37 Pork and an Easy sponsored Dodge. Well, Daryl, it certainly depends how things go because I'm watching somebody like Ray Alfala right now as Marty Arnett comes down to the attention of his crew in that Lifestyles machine. Alfala has made up about four seconds on these leaders in just the short time it's been since he bypassed them. So Alfala right now certainly hauling the mail. And, well, these guys that are in front of him, they are praying for a caution to get back on some sort of even footing with Ray Alfala. Because fact is, Alfala now has been far enough after his most recent stop, he would indeed have to pit again for some type of service. Marty Arnett has blown the right front. Ryan Howard's going to come down pit road very, very soon. As uh, now we're seeing Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eighth spot come down pit road. Looks like a fuel and tire stop. As uh, oh, he looped it. Yellow! Oh, this is huge! This is absolutely huge! Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming out of the pit just turned the number 76 around. That's monstrous. We talked about his ability to drive a car on a track with no grip. Apparently, the cold tires and his, his haste to get back out to the racetrack, just a small brain fart, and around goes Jr.'s number 76. Yeah, Daryl, that's one thing that can really get you. You're so used to those old tires are slick and hot, but they've got some sort of grip to them. As soon as you mash the gas, come out of the pit lane. Whee! Around she goes. Matt, show us the roller coaster that Junior just went on. Yeah, you, you saw it live, and we're going to play it back again. I'm just going to let you listen to him. Let me just roll it back here. Just listen to the RPMs as he leaves his pit stop. And you see, he just gets it up to about 8,000 RPMs, leaving pit road probably in first gear there, lights the tires up, spins it around. Probably not a bad thing. I mean, he pulls it back around, and a couple guys are going to be out of sync here, so this will be interesting. Will be very interesting, as we're going to go back to green with about 50 laps to go here in this one. And for me, uh, that's about the right length for a race, as Thomas Hazard down on to pit road as uh, Alfala will come in as well. Look, looks like he blocked Hazard in. Hazard deep pitted. He's going to have to back up, pitch the car back out of pit road. Ray Alfala just completely ruined Thomas Hazard's day. Hazard still wins the battle out of pit road, but uh, Ray Alfala is now off from Thomas Hazard's Christmas card list. That's for darn sure. And if you're looking for items to fill your Christmas list, now pay very close attention. Buy everything you see, support every product you see over the next two or three minutes. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're looking for Blind Faith here on OLR TV. Tired of playing games? You want to live competition? Well, the all-new OnlineRacing.com brings you the absolute best of sim racing. Everybody knows we have the fastest and most stable dedicated servers. But did you know that now we have the easiest software to set up your own races? Chat with your buddies? Oh yeah, and remember that Java and that pesky redirector? They're gone, baby. No more of that. We still have our popular games like NASCAR 3, NASCAR Heat, NASCAR 4, NASCAR 2002, and of course, NASCAR Racing 2003. But why are we different? Well, maybe it's the car file show, or the setup exchange, or is it the voice chat? Heck, the list goes on and... Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the absolute best sim racers on the planet to race against. Sure, you can sit at home and race against the computer, but what fun is that? Prove you're the best race against the best at OnlineRacing.com. But that's just a glimpse of what you'll find on OLR. Come on over and find out why we say OnlineRacing.com. Don't dream it, live it. Rewind here at 
Pocono Raceway. And now we're three wide for the number two spot. Smith on the inside. Bryant in the middle and on the outside is Davis. Still three wide. Unreal. Welcome back live to the Milwaukee Mile on the DMP Sim Factory Pro Series in the David Acres. Six for kids, 150. We have just gone back green right here at the two-thirds mark of this race. After a caution brought out by Dale Earnhardt Jr. spinning at the exit of the pit lane. Jr. now being scored back in the 13th position. Racing all around this one-mile flat oval. Your leaders have already begun to check out, but the battle right now is for about the third spot on back. And you can see a bunch of guys right here in the thick of it. Some guys a lap down, some guys on the lead lap. Among them, Ray Alfala, Dylan Pettis, Mike Gillette, Ryan Howard, also Jason Atkins in there, and oh yeah, that Earnhardt guy trying to make his way back to the front to unlap himself after costing himself a lap on the next change of pit stops, Darrell. Pettis trying to get to the inside of Ricky Harden. Harden trying to give plenty of room, but also doesn't want to mess up the 42 of Howard as we are three wide momentarily here in the corner as Howard finds a spot to slide in in front of Alfala. Action all the way down the back stretch. It's a six-way drag race. They talked about the four-lane drag strip going in over here in Charlotte. Well, Daryl, we've got about an eight-lane drag strip here at Milwaukee. The problem is it's connected by a couple of left-hand corners the way this is looking right now. These guys drag racing down every straightaway, trying to get a hustle through the corner, back to the gas, and then down the straightaway. Once again, you see a lot of guys using those brakes up, making them go. Pettis leads on Ricky Harden out of turn number two. Dale Jr. right there to watch the battle as well. A couple of guys in front of them having checked out, but Ryan Howard and Ray Alfala right now, nose to tail, side by side, quarter defender. Alfala, arguably the fastest car on the racetrack, stuck back here up this heap of traffic, Darrell, with less now than 50 laps to go. Ryan Howard, the first lead car in the pack, as now Alfala drifts to the high side around Mike Gillette. Gillette gets by Alfala. This is some great racing action. Alfala tries to get in line behind Gillette. Just barely clears that back bumper as they get down to the inside to work their way through turns three and four. They'll come off from turn number four and start to build up speed for the front stretch here at Milwaukee. Close to 150 miles an hour when you dive off into that corner, you know, you're floated in there. Just a tick under 100 at the center of the corner on fresh tires. Then fade back, ease it right back into the gas to go down that back straight. But once again, 150 miles an hour on a flat racetrack. That certainly is hauling the mail as you see Alfala finally get around Mike Gillette. Gillette will try to come back to the top side, so Alfala not able to slide up and use all that momentum. But Gillette will back off to the second, give Alfala the lane. Now he'll be able to work his way around the other couple of guys in front of him, including Ricky Harden and Dylan Pettis, as well as Dale Hart Jr. Three cars, three lap machines between Ryan Howard, Ray Alfala, and your top three, as they are interspersed throughout this entire top six. Again, caution brought up by Dale Jr. Seven cars, well, excuse me, six cars on the lead lap, Daryl. Keith Bishop, the lucky dog, he, the seventh and final car on the lead lap. Keith Bishop, last car on the lead lap. Marty Arnett, the driver that's in contention for that lucky dog, should there be one handed out. However, this race could go the distance as you watch. Number 95 machine trying to work his way around Marty Arnett. That's Dave Vincent. Vincent's in second. Marty Arnett 
is in eighth place. you got to wonder why doesn't Marty Arnett just let Dave Vincent by? Because right behind Dave Vincent is Bill Dorsey, and Dorsey wants to catch up to and pass Arnett. That would be for position. Not only for position, Darrell, but in the event of another yellow flag, that is the lucky dog spot. So you've got two races going on there at the same time between Marty Arnett and Bill Dorsey, both guys who haven't had a lot of luck here so far in the DNP Pro Series season. But right now they've got a solid top ten run going, and they're getting some airtime here on OLR TV. That's certainly always a plus. And speaking of good runs, give a call to Dave Vincent. We haven't mentioned his name hardly all season. And here he is running in second, Darrell, in the closing stages of a race. He trails Tom Hazard by about, uh, 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 about a second and a half, we'll call it. So Vincent certainly within striking distance of Tom Hazard. And we have seen already at the end of the last run, Vincent started 26 on the field. has made his way up to second before that caution. Now he is in second with pressure tires. And chances are, if it's like the last run, Darrell, that, that, that gap will stretch out and he'll reel Tom Hazard in as we get closer to the finish of this one. And we certainly are closing in on the finish of this one. And as we get closer to the finish, one of the things to keep in mind is how hard are you pushing right now? Because we know these tires are only good for a few laps of pushing oh, them hard. Are you push it hard now? It doesn't matter. Yellow flag flies. It roads closed. It roads closed. Big crash in turn four. Daryl Timmy Johnson involved. Tommy Ryan involved. Also hearing Ricky Harden got a piece of that as well. As those guys all pull away from the accident scene. That will bring out our sixth caution of the evening. And uh, that's certainly very welcome news for Marty Arnett. Matt Thomas queuing up the replay for us all so we can witness what went down as Matt Thomas has the replay. Yeah, I got to watch the 43 of Tommy Ryan and uh, Ricky Harden coming off the corner. 21 already has a little right side damage, and it looks like they're going to go down to turn number three here, and I think this is where Tommy Ryan and Ricky Harden are going to run into a little bit of trouble. Gets into the back room, they check up, he hits the apron, gets the back of the 21 again, then the 18 of Johnson gets into the 43, and they, all three of them go up to the wall, and all three of them almost do 360s, a little 180 for the 43. But they all make some contact and spin them around there. It just looks like some hard racing up there in the corner. Hard racing here at the Milwaukee Mile. And, Tony, we're going to see some more hard racing before this thing is done. I'm seeing it in my crystal ball. Well, Daryl, miraculously, I have the same crystal ball, and I see the exact same thing. Maybe we should go into the fortune-telling business. Huh. I also foretell a lot of guys are going to hit pit lane this time. As they make their way down into pit row, Thomas Hazard is going to be the first car to make his way to the pits. Awfully far through it and overshoots the pit. Has to hit reverse. Thankfully enough, Hazard uh, did not get clipped by Alfala as he came into his pit box. Uh, Hazard, that little bobble there, might cost him the lead as he's going to put left side tires. He's down and still in his pit box. He is uh, going to come out of the pits, unfortunately, in the uh, fourth position, going to lose three spots in the pits. Hey, Vincent in the 95 is going to come out the leader. Jason Atkins in second. Ray Alfalo third. Thomas Hazard fourth. And Keith Bishop in fifth. Yeah, new leader out front. That is Dave Vincent. Jason Atkins will be in second, just as Josh told you. And now we're going to have eight drivers in the lead lap. Marty Arnett, the lucky dog. And for those of you out there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. fans, he was coming at that caution. The good news now, well, if he can get back back by Bill Dorsey before the next Jill Dale Jr. will be in the lucky dog position right now, being scored in the 10th spot, and we will be going green. Next time by one lap away from the green flag, Darrell. One lap away from the green flag here in this one, and we talked about speed. Uh, you want to talk about some insane speed, I work at a 3 8 mile oval, and I can tell you how fast a 15-second lap is or a 16-second lap is at a 3 8 mile oval. I don't know exactly the speed, but I know it's incredibly quick. We mentioned Super Modifieds just a couple seconds ago. They are the fastest short-track cars in the world. 
Here's an example. Waterford Speed Bowl in Waterford, Connecticut. Not that long ago, Chris Curley, around that 3.8 mile oval, gets this. Tony, 12.489 on a 3.8 mile oval. That is quick, man. Uh, to say the least. I don't even know what the green, average green, green, speed green. is, but that is absolutely hauling. Green is out here at Milwaukee. Once again, everybody knows the tail. Dale Jr. tries to get by Bill Dorsey. That is the line of lap cars. Dorsey now slides up into Jason Atkins in second. Atkins opens the door now for Ray Alfala as well as Tom Hazard. Three wide off turn two. Move Dale Jr. up to the lucky dog position. Dave Vincent gets a substantial lead now over second place. Ray Alfala, who is mired in this battle of traffic. Alfala stuck in the middle of a three wide as he'll try to back off a little bit. Pettis will pass him up. Now Alfala battling back on the high side. They touch on the front stretch. Alfala will pitch it in. Onto the inside goes Thomas Hazard. This is a battle for position. The battle second. Hazard tries to work by Ray Alfala. He led earlier. Now after some pit comes, mired back in this traffic in the third spot, trying to overtake position number two. But Dylan Pettis is in the way. Hazard cannot go anywhere by Ray Alfaro with Dylan Pettis right in front of him. Three wide behind him. They're banging doors as the battle is still for second. Alfaro and Hazard side by side through one and two. Looks like Hazard can get a little bit of racetrack now. He will in fact clear Ray Alfaro. And Jake Atkins tries to look for the third spot. Alfaro down in the back straightaway. Nothing there just yet, but Ray Alfala, Darrell, after that pit miscue, is having a whale of a time working his way back to the front of the field. I'll tell you what, about mid-pack, they are doing everything they can to wreck some race cars, and they are not being successful, thankfully, in that effort. They were going side by side, three wide, beating, banging, pushing, shoving. The only thing they weren't doing was throwing firebombs at one another. Let's not give them any ideas. Yeah, let's certainly not give him any ideas because that may very well bring out the yellow flag, which is something that Dale Jr. wants, needs, and is begging for right now. In fact, I, actually, I heard him say that there is debris on the racetrack. Of course, he says that about every 15 like feet that, huh? he's going around this plate, Daryl. And it looks like there's, uh, well, I really don't see anything out there. So uh, apparently all the fumes are getting to Jr.'s head. That only works in NASCAR, Junior. Come on, now. This is ARCA. This is sim racing, baby. You got to find a way to get by Vincent and hope for a legitimate caution. No, it's weird. Not what we're used to every Sunday on TV. But this is Monday night. This is OLR TV. You're right out the rear bumper of Jason Addison's number 81 machine. You get a good look at Mike Gillette. Well, first it was Pettis. Now it's Gillette in the number 37 machine. As we've got some great racing action, and it looks like it's going to be Pettis stuck to the high side, going backwards in the pack. As CJ Majors works by, here comes Keith Bishop, also Ryan Howard. Pettis, again, remember, was up front very early in this one, but that long green flag run pretty much cooked his tires and also fried his chances at victory here tonight in the David Akers Kicks for Kids 150. We do have David Akers available to us here. We'll try to get him up in the booth here in just a little bit, Daryl, to talk about his program there with the Kicks for Kids organization, exactly what they do and what they're there for. Of course, Akers, as many of you know, the kicker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, that is the NFL team. And yes, that is the same David Akers that races in the DMP Sportsman Series. We'll get a word with him here momentarily as we watch the battle again. Up front, Tom Hazard starting to close in. He'll work by Dale Jr. He's closed within 10 car lengths of your leader, Dave Vinson. And you know, let's, let's give credit where credit is due. Taylor Earnhardt Jr. did not fight Hazard all that hard. He knows he's a lap down. He's waiting for the lucky dog. Let Hazard by Hazard in position to win this race, potentially. So Junior will let him by, not going to fight him all that hard. Nobody right behind Hazard. Classy move from Dale Earnhardt Junior. And the nice thing is Junior knows if the roles were reversed, and that was Hazard a lap down, and Junior trying to get by and maybe catch up to the race leader and have a shot at the win, Hazard would have done the exact same thing and slid on up out of the way and let Junior go by. Exactly, Daryl. And one thing that you notice amongst a lot of these DMP guys, there is a lot of class in this field. And earlier in the season, we had some issues with some respect for class in these guys. And 
Well, there are some issues on track and off track. Well, those things have been taken care of, and you'll find these to be some of the classiest, some of the most well-rounded drivers anywhere on the Internet, and for that matter, the real race track as well. A lot of these guys have some experience in the physical world of other sports, either as drivers, crew members, car owners, mechanics, whatever the case may be, and a lot of that translates here on the simulated racetrack as well, and it certainly puts on a great show for you here on OLR TV. And when we say that they have experience in the, in the physical world, we're not just talking about Cup or Nationwide or Trucks or ARCA. Uh, a lot of these guys, they either drive or rent or stock cars at their local short track. Maybe they drive or rent a late model or a road runner or a hobby stock or a street stock or whatever it happens to be, they're involved in the racing world in some way. Or the Tony, you're involved in the physical racing world. Matt Thomas involved in the physical racing world. I'm involved in the physical racing world, and I believe Josh has seen a physical race. Last I checked, they did have racetracks up in Minnesota. They wait for the lake to freeze over, and they go ice racing up in Minnesota. That's okay. It's not like there's much else to do in Minnesota. After all, the Vikings suck. Anyway, Dave Vincent is your race leader, but for how much longer? Here comes Thomas Hazard. He's not offended by that. He doesn't know anything about football. Thomas Hazard catching up to Dave Vincent. That lead is going away. It is, Daryl, but don't look now. Ray Alfala just passed Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jason Atkins trying to do the exact same thing. Ray Alfala now is clear of any obstacles on his way to the lead. Less than 25 laps to go, and we're going to have a three-way battle for the top spot. Off of turn number four, David Vincent's lead stands at one car length. Vincent up by a car length, Hazard down into second, and right now Josh Fredericks, not a lot to do out on pit road. Right now, he's looking at the Atlas, discovering that, yes, they do have a football team up in his neck of the woods, although they haven't been playing much football, at least not for the last ten years. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has dropped from the server. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will not win his third race in as many shots recently here in this one. And that's going to hurt him bad in the point standings as well. Because Jr. was your points leader coming in. He will not be the points leader going out. Exactly, Daryl. He was up by only 30 markers over your current third-place driver, Ray Alfala. Now, the good news for Dale is that there's 130 some odd markers back to third place, Rick Savage. Fourth place, though, is Tom Hazard, and Hazard right now is trying to go lead on Dave Vincent, so he's going to make up some ground on Dale Jr. Very much, we're going to see a point shake-up here tonight after the end of this one. And as you see, Hazard works to the bottom of the racetrack. Vincent will pinch him down and slam the door in turn number one. Tom Hazard trying his best to get by Dave Vincent. Vincent looking for his first DMP Pro Series win and Lord knows how long, Daryl. Can somebody, somebody please go through the, the Sprint Cup garage and give these cup drivers a decent internet connection? It seems like the guys that drop are the guys that have cup rides for crying out loud. Here comes Hazard. Hazard down to the inside of Vincent Battle for the lead. Side by side, Vincent battling on the high side, Hazard battling on the inside, and Hazard running like a scalded dog because coming up behind Hazard is Ray Alfala. Alfala has closed within two car lengths, the back bumper of second place, Dave Vincent. Vincent tries that higher entry in the turn three to get through center to roll just a little bit better, but he's having to ride the brakes to get that car to turn. Cannot carry the momentum to the center of the corner. Now Tom Hazard. Dave Vincent was his enemy just a minute ago. Now he is his best friend. How long can Dave Vincent hold off Ray Alfala from the back bumper of that Bob Dillner Inc. Speed51.com Chevrolet, Daryl. They are teammates. I don't think you'll see Vincent hold off Alfala. Vincent drifts to the high side, opens the door up a little bit for Alfala. Now closes the door once again. Vincent. Will he give Alfala some room out of turn number four? four? Just a little bit, but not a whole heck of a lot. Vincent racing Alfala just as hard as he'll race anybody else. you got to love that. Teammate or not, this is for a spot, buddy. And Vincent just drove into the corner a little too hard. Had to tap the brakes in the center. That killed the momentum and allowed Ray Alfala to bypass him for position number two. Now Alfala will try his best to close in on Tom Hazard in the Speed 51 machine. Hazard has got a lead of about eight car lengths still. Now it's 16 
laps to go. That's plenty of time from what we've seen earlier from Ray Alfala for him to close it on Tom Hazard and do the deed of taking the lead here in the late stages of this Kicks for Kids 150. The only thing you have to wonder now, though, is Tom Hazard saving what little bit he can save with the entire remainder of the top five just tenths of a second behind him. I don't know that there's anything left to say for Tom Hazard in the number nine machine as Alfala continues to close in, shaves off more than a tenth last time down the front stretch. And Alfala running around this racetrack right there, glued to the white line, the yellow curb, lets that car drift out on exit, carries that momentum the best he possibly can, and charges in just enough into the corner, but again, that car doesn't drift up as much as some of these other guys, just enough. Yeah. Keep that momentum around, get that car turned, and down the straightaway. He'll go behind him. Dave Vincent tries to hold off Jason Atkins for third. Looks like it may be unsuccessful. Once again, Vincent going to try to slam the door in turn one. It will be successful. Atkins will give him a little bit of a nudge, Daryl, but Vincent will hold the spot for now. That was the hey tap right there. That little tap was, hey, 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 hey. Uh, let's see what happens if Atkins is forced to yell a little bit louder with those little taps with the 81 machine. After all, uh, it may be a little bit easier to slam the door from time to time, but it's really difficult to close the door when the back tires are no longer touching the ground. Yeah, Daryl, the things don't like to steer very well when they're on two tires because they tend to go wherever the guy behind you points those front tires. And uh, a lot of times that's not a very pretty sight. Well, you mentioned that, and I was just watching what's called a skid plate race the other day on uh, one of my favorite shows, Lucas Oil, On the Edge, on speed. I highly recommend that you record this deal. Uh, what a blast that thing was. Uh, skid plate race. Check it up on the net, or look it up on the net. There's got to be some video footage out there somewhere of a skid plate race. They do some crazy things in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, I think if I had to move, I'd move to Rockford, Illinois. They got some great stuff going on out there. Thomas Hazard, your leader, Ray Alfala, sits in second. Dave Vincent is third. But for how much longer? Adkins all over the back bumper. We look to the inside of the turn number four once again. Adkins tries to look down low. Vincent will try to slam the door. Adkins is there. No way the door gets slammed. Adkins has to jump on the binder, drifts up the racetrack. Look at Gillette. Gillette now on the back bumper of Adkins down the back stretch. He thought about making it three wide for just a second. Daryl thought better of it. Atkins now will charge into turn number three. And once again, Vincent having to use the brakes to get that car to turn. Can't get it to roll the center. He will lose two spots now. Mike Gillette will take advantage of the hole open by Jason Atkins. Move Dave Vincent back to fifth. Ryan Howard also coming in. He's going to try to pray in on that number 95 machine. Ten laps remain in this one here at Milwaukee. And back up front, Ray Alfala has closed within five car lengths of Tom Hazard. Those two have opened up a substantial margin, nearly two seconds, over third place Jason Atkins. Battle, barring a caution flag, Daryl, is a two-car race for the win. Barring a caution flag, it will be a two-car race for the win. And Alfala continues to close on Thomas Hazard. And Let's give credit where credit is due to Mike Gillette. He looked at that potential three wide, and he said, hmm, do I want to go three wide? And then he decided to quote the famous uh, movie star, Flipper. He went, eh, 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 eh. And it's not Flipper like you would normally think, Daryl. It is, in fact, the Dolphin. Nonetheless, Gillette now is going to try to flip his way by Atkins for the third spot. Gillette hasn't been on OLR TV for a while. Remember, the top three get their lights shown on them here on OLR TV. They get to talk to us. Gillette certainly wanting to do that, as is Jason Atkins. Both of them haven't really been on OLR TV that much here in the recent past. So that certainly going to be a battle for us to keep our eye on. Also, though, up front, you start to see your top two slide those cars out of the corner, carry a little bit more speed off the exit of turn two and four to carry as much momentum as they possibly can. Hazard using up his stuff. Alfala using up his stuff. Six and a half laps to go, Daryl. Hard to say who's going to win this one. Hard to say who's going to win this one, but it'll be either Thomas Hazard or Ray Alfala without a caution flag. That is for sure. As uh, now Adkins 
up in the third spot. Gillette is fourth, but Gillette trying to find a way by Adkins. And it's still just about a half a second between Hazard and Alfala. Two totally different lines around this racetrack, and they are pretty much remaining constant as far as distance from one another. That yeah, one is lap. pretty impressive. And you talked about being able to talk to us at the oh, end of the race. It's not us. They want oh, yellow! Yellow flag as uh, the 81 goes around. Adkins goes around. In the okay, number now showing in the seventh spot, he'll be showing an eighth not too long from now. Uh, as Adkins goes around in the 81 machine, it's not you and I that they want to talk to, Tony. Everybody wants to talk to Josh at the end of the race because that means they won. And, Daryl, this is going to be an absolute free-for-all. It's hard to say who is going to win. The question now is going to come a lot down to pit strategy. Matt, show us the replay. What happened over in turn three? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like the 81 had some serious problems getting into the corner. I'm not sure if that was some uh, electrical problems on his end or not. But looks like he just kind of uh, okay, lost connection a little bit there, and he yeah, just no. kind of uh, slowed up in a 37, nowhere to go. So tough break for Atkins in 81. And, Daryl, well, we've got a minute here. We're going to watch to see who pits. Dave Vincent on pit road. Any other takers? Don't see very many. We're going to see if tires, in fact, do come to mean anything. Josh, real quick, cover the stop for you. Or for us, excuse me here. The guy coming in to take tires. Well, Tom, we've got a couple guys coming in. Dave Vincent, Bill Dorsey, Marty Burnett, Keith Bishop, Ricky Harden, and TJ Majors coming in. Uh, Dave thinking with only two or three stops, or two or three laps left here, hopefully he can gain a couple spots and bring himself back into the top three, Tony. And we'll see if that indeed comes to be those guys on the tail end of the lead lap. Real quick, before we go back green here, we have got a hold of David Akers. Of course, the namesake of the David Akers Kicks for Kids organization is named for. And David, we've heard of this. We've seen you on your race car in the DMP Sportsman Series. What exactly is the Kicks for Kids organization, and what do you do? Well, you know, I really felt blessed to be able to play in the NFL, and um, I wanted to do something to give back here to the Philadelphia community, which has been so great to me. So basically we developed this uh, this program. We deal with Children's Hospital of uh, Philadelphia here, and it's been pretty good for us. We've been able to um, staff a resource center for the visually impaired and, and, and hearing impaired. And then we also have what's called David's uh, Locker. And basically what we do is uh, we get requests from the uh, families that are – uh, having to spend quite a bit of time here in Children's Hospital, and we try to either, you know, from plane tickets to computers to, uh, you know, even, you know, night in local hotels, uh, basically their needs just to make sure they're met, and so we want to make their stay, uh, you know, in that hospital, you know, as, as pleasurable as possible just so their kids can get out, and I had an issue with my son. He, uh, it's been talked about a lot lately with that MRSA staph infection. My son had that when he was two and a half, right before we went to the Super Bowl. It actually happened on Christmas Day. And uh, spending a week there and, and, and seeing how the uh, child life specialists and all that t deal with you, uh, I just had to do more for that, for that hospital. Of course, it always is very sad and really tugs at your heartstrings. Anytime you see something like that happen to kids, David, and it's certainly great that you and a lot of other professional athletes are getting involved to help kids. There's a number of charities out there that do take, uh, take heed and help those parents and families and even the kids, of course, that come down with those illnesses. For those out there in Petropolis that are watching here on DMV, this OLR TV broadcast, and want to get involved further with uh, the Kick for Kids organization, possibly make a contribution or even just to find out more information, what do they need to know and where do they need to go? Well, we have uh, David Akers Kids for Kids dot org, and uh, we don't have the you know the biggest website and all that stuff. Basically, we try to keep our cost down to a minimum because we've been able to uh, raise several hundred thousands of dollars for for Children's Hospital, and and you know we, we we keep those costs down so the money can go right back to the kids. So we we have a very basic website. There's contact information. We have a lady who runs our foundation named Rose Cunningham. Does an awesome job. We got two events a year. Uh, we have one um, kicking in the spring. Actually, uh, Butt Kicker was a huge sponsor for us this year, and uh, obviously they're they're great here with DMP and, and and the online racing community as well. So 
uh, you know, getting guys like that, these, these major sponsors that are so great. Lincoln Financial is another great one for me personally and also with my foundation. So when we get guys like that on board who really want to, uh, you know, give money, give back to the community, uh, it really does help quite a bit. But uh, David Akers, org is, um, you know, the way they can, you know, get information about us. And um, we're, we're usually a little behind on, on getting the website up. But, again, that's keep our costs down. Well, David, we get the one-to-go signal now from Race Control. Two laps to settle this one amongst the guys up front. Single file. Good luck to you next week, namely, of course, at Rockingham in the Sportsman Series event. But real quick, for we go back green, who's your pick to win this one? Well, I'd like to see old Dave Vincent get a win there, but it uh, looks like Ray, you know, I think Ray's got the car tonight. Well, Dave, we'll see if that the pick does indeed pan out for you. David Akers. And David Akers Kicks for Kids. Once again, David Akers Kicks for Kids dot org, where you can find out more information. Daryl, two miles to settle the David Akers Kicks for Kids one fifty. Two miles to settle this deal up. Pace car will come in real quick before we go green next Tuesday. Butt Kicker green, Sportsman green, green, Series green. from Rockingham at nine thirty. Then uh, the Monday after Pro Series from Rockingham. We're going back to Green Flag Racing. As we head through turns one and two, it's Hazard, Alfala, one and two, they're pulling away from the field. Hazard, your leader, Alfala in second spot, trying to find a way to get to the inside of Hazard. And behind him, Dave Vincent has made his way from fifth now, up to third by Michael Ant. He, Keith Bishop, Marty Arnett, four brand new sticker tires, chasing down your leaders, Tom Hazard and Ray Alfala. White flag in the air, one mile remains to settle the DMP Pro Series event in Milwaukee. Hazard fins off the challenge of Ray Alfala. Alfala has the door slammed on him, but here comes Vincent and Keith Bishop now. Vincent looks to the high side. Hazard down to the inside, slamming the door. Alfala will put the bumper on Hazard as they come through three and four. Touches him, tries to get him up out of the way. Hazard holds his line on the inside. Alfala looks to the high side. Vincent already up there. Bishop, Bishop involved in this one. Three wide for second. Hazard takes the win. It's going to be Hazard, then Bishop, Alfala, and Vincent. Dave Vincent comes up and grabs fourth spot. What a finish. This spot will go to Marty Arnett. Wow. That's all you can say for this one, Tony. Wow. Absolutely, Daryl, and I knew as we watched the pit stop there, I mean, a lot of guys don't really think that that may have made that much of a difference, but I knew that those guys with sticker tires were going to certainly have a shot, and if Vincent could have pulled it off on the top side, wouldn't that have been a story? But uh, Tom Hazard was able to hold off all their challenges. Low, high, no matter what he did, snake line down the back straightaway, Thought he and Alfala were all going to collide and open the door for somebody behind them, Daryl, but certainly did not happen, and Hazard definitely earned this one. Thomas Hazard certainly did earn this win. Congratulations to Thomas Hazard. The Speed51.com sponsored entry for BDI Racing. That's right, BDI Racing, Brad Dillner Incorporated. We're going to take a quick break. We will come back with post-race interviews. We'll talk to Hazard, we'll talk to Bishop, and we'll talk to Alfala. We'll be back post-race, coming up next on OLR TV. Tired of playing games? You want to live competition? Well, the all-new OnlineRacing.com brings you the absolute best of sim racing. Everybody knows we have the fastest and most stable dedicated servers. But did you know that now we have the easiest software to set up your own races, chat with your buddies? Oh yeah, and remember that Java and that pesky redirector? They're gone, baby. No more of that. We still have our popular games like NASCAR 3, NASCAR Heat, NASCAR 4, NASCAR 2002, and of course, NASCAR Racing 2003. But why are we different? Well, maybe it's the car file shoulder, or the setup exchange, or is it the voice chat? Heck, the list goes on and... Oh, yeah. 
I'm talking about the absolute best sim racers on the planet to race against. Sure, you can sit at home and race against the computer, but what fun is that? Prove you're the best, race against the best at OnlineRacing.com. But that's just a glimpse of what you'll find on OLR. Come on over and find out why we say OnlineRacing.com. Don't dream it, live it. NASCAR Hot Pass, only on DirecTV, puts you behind the wheel. Select any featured driver to get dedicated video feeds, real-time stats, and live team audio. You think the guy could have fit? He has to. Only NASCAR Hot Pass lets you experience all the heart-stopping action from the best seat in the house. This season, don't just watch NASCAR, bring it home. NASCAR Hot Pass, exclusively on DirecTV. Now available in high definition. to me. I'm going to be wide open. The world of light beer. Woo! Yeah! You, you were open and now you are closed. Just got a little darker. Introducing new Michelob Ultra Amber. With its deep amber color and full flavored taste, it's a new look of light beer. No free pass to beer. Ooh, late hit. The newly redesigned Butt Kicker DMP Sportsman Series is chock full of drivers that are looking to impress in 2008. These sim racers come from all walks of life, but mainly from the past DMP GN and CTS division, along with an influx of new blood. Sportsman drivers will push their identically prepared machines to the edge, challenging three wide and door to door to get to the front. Bumping and grinding, it's back in sim racing. Stay tuned to OLR TV as Butt Kicker presents the DMP Sportsman Series. Back here on OFR TV, tonight's race brought to you by the David Akers Kicks for Kids Foundation. You can get more information at davidakerskicksforkids.org. That's davidakerskicksforkids.org. Also brought to you by the Sim Factory at www.thesimfactory.com. And by DMP Online Racing at www.dmp-racing.com. And by the Butt Kicker, a Gatamer Corporation. That's at thebuttkicker.com. That's thebuttkicker.com. And Arca Sim Racing, oddly enough, at arcasimracing.com. Go figure. At onlineracing.com. Well, they remind you, don't dream it, live it. At onlineracing.com. Leave off the G. It's faster that way. And, of course, High Speed Radio, because life's too short to slow down. At High Speed Radio. Dot com. That's going to wrap up the racing portion of this deal. Your top ten is as follows. Thomas Hazard takes the number one spot. You'll see them pop up on your screen momentarily. Second spot belongs to Keith Bishop. 
Third spot goes to Ray Alfala in the number two machine. Fourth is Dave Vincent in the number 95. Fifth spot goes to Marty Arnett in the number 25 machine. Sixth, the number 37 of Mike Gillette. Seventh is the number 42 of Ryan Howard. Eighth is Jason Adkins in the number 81 machine. Ninth, TJ Majors. And tenth belongs to Ricky Harden. Apparently, TJ does not have the same internet co uh, company that A.J. Allmendinger and Dale Earnhardt Jr. have. Both of those drivers out with internet connectivity problems. As uh, That's going to finish up the racing action. However, still have the post-race festivities. We'll pitch it down to our buddy Josh Fredericks, who was caught up with race winner Thomas Hazard in the number nine machine. Josh? Thanks a lot, Darrell. I'm down here in victory lane with Thomas Hazard. Hazard took the lead for the final time on lap 132. What was going through your mind on that last restart when you had two or three cars behind you with old tires and then Dave Vincent and Keith Bishop on four fresh ones? Um, you know, track position was big tonight, especially with the, uh, the lappers to the inside. So I was just going to try and uh, get by everybody and get out front as soon as possible, even if I had to run my tires off. And I uh, just hope it went green from there and so I could get uh, a good lead and stretch it out there near the end. Yeah, I've seen a couple of times there towards the end of the race uh, coming out of turn four. You get awfully loose and had to chase the car down to the bottom. Was that just kind of how the setup was, tight through the middle of the corner and then just very loose off towards the end of the run? Uh, the setup was, was rather tight, but uh, I was using the apron sometimes. Uh, so that's, I mean, if I was loose off the corner there, it was, it was because I was using the apron and I wasn't really trying to, but uh, some, some laps I did hit it and uh, I got loose off of uh, four. Well, I guess uh, you come home the victor, so it must have worked for you. Uh, let's give a shout out to some of the people that keep you running and keep you out front here at DMP. I got to give a shout out to sponsors, uh, Bob Dillner, Speed 51, and... Uh, BDI Racing, and i got to give a shout-out to teammates Martin Harris, John Ellenberg, uh, Josh Parker, James Fitzgerald, and uh, Josh Fredericks. Well, that'll wrap it up down here for Victory Lane. We're going to go down to the second-place fin finisher with Daryl Morley. Thank you very much. I tracked down Keith Bishop. Keith, you drove the wheels off that number 67 machine, did everything you could to catch up to that number nine machine, just not enough time. Do you think with one more lap you could have tracked him down? Yeah, I like. I think so. I don't know. Thomas drove a great race, so congratulations to him on winning it. It was a real good job there. Um, he wasn't going to give me no room. I mean, he was going to keep the low line, and even on new tires, the high line was still not good at all. So, I mean, I don't. I don't know with one more lap we could have got him or not. It would have been close. Well, you guys certainly put on a great show. Tell us about that long green flag run. How important was your tire wear at that point? I actually stayed out there. Um, I was just kind of doing what Dale was doing there since he's had so much success here lately, and uh, he ended up going into the pits right before we went back to green there. So I had about 10 or 15 laps of my tires already, and I went out there and led a few laps and thought I was on top of the world. And then about 15 laps later, I was junk. I just fell, I think I fell all the way back to about 12th or something in that run, so tires were huge. Well, the only Ford in the top three here tonight. That's got to feel good to represent for the Blue Oval Boys, huh? Yeah, I mean, first on race day, you know. Absolutely. Or flip over, read directions. Tell us about the people that help you out and make sure that you get to do what you love to do every single week or every opportunity you get anyways here in DMP. Uh, first off, i got to thank Smoketronics and Dale Biko over there for sponsoring this ride. It really helps me out a lot. And uh, make sure you visit Smoketronics for all your sim racing needs. Uh, Brandon Witt and John Score have helped me out a lot. Um, they, run the, they run a lot of testing with me there during the week to help me get ready. And I uh, really appreciate everybody at DMP and everything for putting this deal together. And It's a good time. Hey, well, that's Keith Bishop, driver of the number 67 Ford that he claims is first on race day. We'll put it down to Tony Tex Stevens, who I think is with a guy that would probably say Ford stands for found on road dead. That would be the driver of the number two Chevrolet, Ray Alfala. Tony? Exactly, Daryl. He, though, is somebody who thought he was going to be first on race day. Unfortunately for Ray Alfala, it looks like the 
third place is where you're going to end up. Take us back. We talked earlier about it in the broadcast, the green flag run, where if the caution fell right, it wasn't exactly a death sentence, and you certainly had a shot still to win this, but how much did that pit road speeding penalty hurt you? Um, it, it's hard to say. Um, y- you know, it it didn't uh, didn't cost me the lead. I mean, I wouldn't have been out in the lead if the caution would have come out, but it might have cost me a few spots and just took me long enough to get to the front where I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't challenge Thomas there at the end before the green-white checkered, so, you know, just the boat had moved up, move on my part. I, I didn't know where the the pit road speeding uh, line was. I mean, I don't even think there was one, but I, I should have been more careful, and uh, I didn't speed, like, on pit road. I just sped on entry just a little bit, So, uh, but I was fortunate enough to have that big lead, and I uh, didn't miss a lap. Well, wait. Of course, luckily, you made it up from that. You got back in the lead lap, and the caution came out. You and about five or six other drivers were the only ones in the lead lap, which, of course, certainly helped your chances, like you said, of getting back to the front. And you were in second, come that green-white checker restart, and you looked like you were closing down the hazard just a little bit before the caution did come out. Take us through, though, those last two laps. Four or five guys behind you had on brand new skins. You had 40 lap old tires trying to get by the leader and a bunch of guys coming behind you. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I mean, I, I debated whether to take tires or not, but, I mean, last week the guys that took tires seems like they all just got in a mess back there. So uh, I stayed out, and uh, Hazard was getting loose off of the turns, and I couldn't capitalize on him because I had everybody coming behind me. So... Uh, last lap, I just went for the blocks. I mean, I'm usually not the one to block, but, you know, last lap on the back stretch, I, uh, I was actually uh, throwing a defensive move, and, and, uh, and Hazard thought I was actually trying to pass him, so he went down and, and screwed his up, screwed his three. So that, I mean, I got to his bumper, and I was really just trying to stay out, uh, um, in front of, uh, Bishop, and got him a little, and got Thomas a little bit, and kind of slowed me down, and, uh, missed, uh, second place by three thousandths of a second. Of course, three thousandths, and like they say, an inch is as good as a mile. But nonetheless, still a, a good showing for you to do unofficially take over the point lead from Dale Earnhardt Jr. Of course, Tom Hazard a little bit uh, behind you there, as is Dave Vincent and Bill Dorsey. And we'll cover that here in just a moment on ORR TV. But before we let you go, give a shout out to your friends, car owner sponsors, and people that make all this happen for Ray Alfala. Yeah, I want to thank Mud Picker Live uh, today. Uh, everybody that participated was a good good race today. And uh, looking forward to whatever is next. Well, congratulations, Ray, on your third place finish. We'll go ahead and let you go. Daryl, at third place, seems uh, fairly happy, but I know deep down inside, Ray really wanted that win. Oh, of course you wanted that win. And if you don't want the win, quite frankly, you're wasting your time. When you go out racing, is, uh, that's the ultimate goal for a racer, whether it be sim racer, physical racer, or anything in between, and oddly enough, they'll probably invent something in between. want to remind you of the upcoming events here on OLR-TV coming up on Tuesday. That's July 8th. The DMP Butt Kicker Sportsman Series is on the air here at OLR-TV. That's from Rockingham. That's at 9.30 Eastern Time. Then on Monday, July 14th, it's the Sim Factory DMP Pro Series from Rockingham. Once again, 9.30 Eastern Time. Start then on Tuesday, the 15th of July, the Boz Racing Texas 250 at Texas Revamped at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget to grab your DVDs. you got just about 20 minutes left in the pre-order situation. $8 of pre-order price, $2.99 shipping and handling. After midnight Eastern Time, because Eastern is the only time zone that matters, the price does go up. It does go up to a... Uh, to $11 plus the $2.99 shipping and handling and still worth every penny at that $11 price. Once again, that's going to do it here for us from OLR-TV. Tonight's producer, Matt Wrightson, Kid Thomas, producer, director, uh, editor, you name it. He's done it. He also covered all of our replays. Our action on pit road was once again covered by Josh Fredericks. I'm Daryl Morley. And the other guy in the booth was, of course, Tony Tex. Stevens. That's going to wrap it up. For my broadcast partner, Tony Tech Stevens and Josh Fredericks, 
And, of course, Matt Racing Kid Thomas, pushing those buttons and making that magic happen. I am Daryl Morley, thanking you very much for tuning in and reminding you, keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down, and always, always, always keep that hammer down. We'll see you next time, right here on OLR TV. Uh, well, I'm going to say Daytona or somewhere.